So in the previous video I showed you how we have some synchronization issues. Basically, every thread that comes in here, well, we have two threads running at the same time. So here's thread 1, and here's thread 2, you know, and they can be at different stages in this method at different times. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but they both execute the same amount of code, but the problem is they also work on the exact same data. Notice this count, we made it static, which means it is shared between both threads. It is the same piece of RAM. So I'm actually going to go here and I'm going to draw count here. Here's, here's the RAM that represents count. I defined it as an int. Int is short for int32, so this is 32 bits. Four bytes. Uh, we first start its value out at zero. And then thread1 comes in here and it says int temp gets count. Well, temp is a local variable here, and we'll talk about that in a sec. But basically local means... Uh, thread 1, we'll just say thread 1, gets its own copy of temp because it's local to the thread. It gets pushed onto thread 1's stack. We'll talk about that in more detail later. Um, thread 2 also gets its own copy of temp. So here's thread 2's copy of temp as well. All right, so thread 1 comes in. Int temp gets count. Count to 0, so it puts a 0 here. It also goes to sleep. Once it's asleep, thread 2 comes in here and says, ah, int temp gets count. Well, then 2 gets a 0 as well. So they both read zero from count, which is the proper value for count. We haven't incremented it yet. Eventually, thread one wakes up and says, okay, count gets temp plus one. Well, temp for one is zero, so zero plus one is one. Let me uh, erase this here and put a one there. Because we said the assignment here, I'm going to assign count the value of temp plus one. Zero plus one is one. All right, and then it goes and reports, hey, I did this incrementation, ah, and then it goes back to sleep. All right, so that's thread one. While it's sleeping, thread two wakes back up and says, okay, count gets temp plus one. Well, counts, or th thread two temp variable is zero. All right, zero plus one is one. So then it puts a one back over this one. doesn't really accomplish much. And then it reports, hey, it reports, hey, I incremented this count to one as well. Aren't you proud of me? I did the exact same work that thread one did. All right? This is this is, uh, almost seems like our government in some ways. They like to redo things just for fun. Oh, I just slipped a political in there. Ah, not good. Anyway, so so that's our problem there is that they read the value, they operate on the value, then they write out uh, the results of that operation, and one of them goes stale. In this case, probably the second thread because the second thread gets started 500 milliseconds. After it's thread, thread two is working on stale data. If you've ever tasted a stale donut, it's the same idea. It's it's not good data. It's old data. We want new and improved data. So how do we get around that? Well, we can synchronize a little bit, and and there are several ways to synchronize threads. I'm going to show you the most basic, probably or most often used, at least by me, way of doing it. But then I'll show you all the other ways through several other future videos. Go up to the top here. Uh, I'm going to say object, object, baton, gets new object. And there's a reason why this has to be out on the heap, and I'll explain all why this has to be. But in the meantime, I'm just making this baton similar to relay races. If you've ever seen a relay race, in order for runners to run, they have to have the baton. And so one runner runs, and he passes the baton off to the next runner, which runs a little bit, and then passes the baton, so on and so forth. All right, so in order for a thread to get into what I will call the danger zone, it has to have the baton. So what is the danger zone in my code here? Well, the danger zone is whenever I read or write to, especially write to, the shared data. And the shared data in our example is this static count variable I have right here. All right, so notice, actually, let's click on that. You see how Visual Studio highlights all the areas where I'm using count here. It looks like we read from count here, we write to count there, but we also read from count here. All right, so anywhere this thread wants to use count, increment count, and then read back the results of what it wrote, we don't want any other thread executing this code inside of this highlighted area at the same time as one thread is. This is the, the danger zone, so to say. So there's 101 ways to do synchronization. I'll show you throughout the videos how to do, uh, hopefully all, if not most of them, uh, most or if, if not all, you get the idea of them. But the basic one I use most often is this lock structure, which is some syntactic sugar for some other stuff I will show later. I'm going to lock on the baton right here, and then did I? I didn't make it static, and the baton needs to be static as well, so it's shared between 
between the two threads. So lock the baton, get in here, do your work, increment count, report what you did, and then get out. And once we're outside the lock, that's when we'll go to sleep. So when we're outside the lock, a second thread can come in here. So let me just illustrate here what's going to happen here. I had thread one previously and thread two. Thread one is going to come in. In fact, we'll do thread one. Let's do thread one in blue. Okay, so thread one will come in here. It'll say, hey, is there a lock on baton? No, it'll grab the lock. It'll make its temporary. Temp gets the value of count, which will be zero. It'll sleep for a while, which is rude. It basically locked the door on on any other thread coming in here, and then it went to sleep. That's very rude. It's like going in the bathroom stall, the only stall at the restaurant, and sleeping. That's so rude. But it is. It's going to say, hey, I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to widen this danger area. I'm just going to dare you to do something evil to me. And then when it wakes up, it says, okay, count gets temp plus one. So here's count out here. Count is shared. All right, I'll put a C there for count. As start out at zero, count gets temp plus one. Well, temp, this thread one's temp is zero, plus one is one. Okay, and then it reports, hey, look at what I did. That's awesome. Leaves the lock zone, goes to sleep. But even before it goes to sleep, this section of code is now open for thread two to come in. Now, thread two could immediately come in, or it could come in after a while. It all depends on the operating system what the operating system decides to do. But until then, there's no way that thread 2 can get into this lock until thread 1 has let go of it. Well, thread 2 comes in and says, okay, I'm going to grab the lock. Temp gets count. Well, so here's temp. Temp gets count. Count is now 1. Goes to sleep. Oh, a lot of rude people here hogging up the bathroom stall. Going to sleep. Uh, wakes up, says, okay, well, count gets temp plus 1. So temp right now is 1 for thread 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. So now we went 1, 2 instead of 1, 1. That's nice, and that's what will be reported to the console. That's the behavior we're searching for. So let me uh, let me clean this all off. Control F5, just demonstrate it. You'll see it runs really slow because these threads are hogging the lock. But we now have the desired behavior, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so on and so forth. Hopefully you get the idea. The um, concept of concurrency, I hope, is... Not necessarily new to you. A local example here we have out in Salt Lake. Uh, let me uh, pull up a browser. So I hope I don't date this video uh, too much. But we have some really cool theaters here in Salt Lake where basically I can uh, I can uh, buy some tickets here. When I click buy tickets, I can also pick which seat I wish to sit in in the theater. And so please select your tickets first. All right. Well, let's I don't know, let's let's go all out. I'm going to buy ten tickets. So then. I can basically sit myself wherever I want to in this theater. Well, if the movie is new and it's a Friday, Saturday night, I could be competing with a lot of people to grab the tickets to this theater and trying to group my seats up. So that's two threads, or multiple threads in that case, fighting over which theater seat to get. And then the, the website has some interesting rules. I believe when, when I get to the checkout, if I say next step, and then I put my credit card info in, it eventually says, okay, I'm going to try to get the seats. Oh, I didn't get the seats. Oh, you know what I think it does, actually? I think it reserves the seats for like 10, 10 minutes, and then that allows me to buy the seats. And But if I don't buy the seats after 10 minutes, the seats become available for other people. I think airlines actually work uh, the opposite direction, where when you go to buy a ticket on an airline, yeah, you can get all the way through the payment process, but then the seats could run out on the plane, and that's because they want to keep those seats open and hot to the first bidder with money. And so anyway, concurrency in a nutshell, concurrency issues. Same Same sort of thing we're dealing with over in the... Uh, in this example, we have this count, we're fighting over this shared data, and so we need to do some coordination to make sure no two people buy the same movie theater seat, no two people buy the same plane ticket, so on and so forth.